Hello everyone and welcome to another video of our current trends in hypertension. Today is part 3, the SPRINT trial. I'm Dr. Mohamed Tinawi, I'm a nephrologist in Northwest Indiana. The SPRINT trial was initially published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2015. The final report was published in 2021. Anyone with interest in high blood pressure should know about this very important trial. This is a multi-center, randomized, controlled trial. It enrolled 9,361 subjects, close to 10,000 subjects. Median follow-up was 3.26 years. So who was included in the trial? Anyone who is 50 years and older with high blood pressure defined as systolic blood pressure over 130 millimeters of mercury plus history of cardiovascular disease, or chronic kidney disease stage 3 or 4, so EGFR 20 to 59, so approximately stage 3 or 4, or intermediate to high risk for cardiovascular disease other than CVA, or anyone over age of 75, uh, whether or not they are any risk factors. So, the patients were randomized into two groups, intensive treatment, and the target was less than 120, and standard treatment, and the target was a systolic blood pressure less than 140. Now, it's very important to know that previously, no trial showed any benefit from intensive blood pressure targets. So this is the first positive trial in this regard. Now, it's very important to know how they measured blood pressure. Blood pressure measurement was fully automated, okay, with fully automated devices. And the measurements were either attended by staff or not, but the staff member did not measure the blood pressure. Now, this was done to reduce errors in obtaining blood pressure measurements. It may reduce white coat high blood pressure. Therefore, if we want to apply the results of this trial, we should use the same methodology, the same way they measured a blood pressure. So, like I said, this was a positive trial. The results were very impressive. In the intensive group, Okay, the group where blood pressure was lowered to below 120 millimeter of mercury systolic. There was a 25% decrease in the primary combined cardiovascular endpoints. So what were these endpoints? First occurrence of CVA, cerebrovascular accident, meaning strokes, myocardial infarction, acute coronary syndrome, heart failure, or death. So 25% decrease in that and 27% reduction of death from any cause. Now, heart failure was lower by 38% in the intensive treatment group. What about patients with chronic kidney disease? It is important to know that 28% of the subjects in the SPRINT trial had chronic kidney disease, defined as estimated GFR between 20 to 59. No patient had Positive kidney disease, proteinuria over one gram. And this is, was done because other studies have not shown benefit from intensive blood pressure treatment in this population. Okay, So uh, it was felt that there's no need to restudy that issue. Now, in the chronic kidney disease cohort, there was no difference in the incidence of end-stage renal disease or morbidity. So there is no difference in primary combined cardiovascular endpoints between standard and intensive treatment group. Meaning if you have someone with stage 3 or 4 chronic kidney disease and you want to do intensive blood pressure lowering, this is not going to delay the need for dialysis. However, mortality was less. So even though morbidity and the need for dialysis was no different, the mortality was less, was lower in the intensive treatment group in patients with chronic kidney disease, and that was by 28%. So that was also pretty impressive. Now, there was something that is concerning. Because of intensive blood pressure lowering, there was 30% uh, there was 30% uh, or more decline in estimated GFR in the intensive treatment group. 
This was due to lowering blood pressure, due to hemodynamic effect of lower blood pressure. However, that improved after six months of therapy. Now, the decline in SMAGFR did not change the benefit of the intensive blood pressure lowering. It did not it changed the fact that mortality remained lower. Now, the trial did not include patients with proteinuria over one gram, did not include patients with advanced CKD4 or stage 5 chronic kidney disease. Therefore, we should not generalize the findings to these populations. Finally, let's talk about the SPRINT MIND substudy. It showed that the combined endpoints of probable dementia and mild cognitive impairment were lower, were significantly lower in the intensive treatment group. Uh, there was a 15% reduction. Therefore, the study alleviated the concern that intensive blood pressure lowering increases the risk of dementia. So it doesn't. So I hope that I covered this pretty well in about six minutes. I'm going to provide you with a list of all the references in the description. See you in the next video.